Hello YouTube, Mr. Report Newsletter and Tutor subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is January 7th, 2020. And this is the Mr. Report for newsletter number one for 2020. I'm going to try do my best to make it through. Make it through making this video. My, my apologies. I really don't feel that well. Um, this weekly newsletter program is all about helping people see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit, water, and blood. Testifying from the Holy Scriptures from Revelation 1. Well, it's from Genesis 1 to Revelation. And John sent in number six of the radio series. Appreciate that very much, John. And uh, our first chat session is tonight, 7 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Let me show you Let me show where that is and how that works. This is what it looks like. So you got a little mic here, like that. And when you want to, when you want to say something on the mic, you put your hand, you, you come up here and it says join the queue to talk. You just click on this, and then your name will pop up there. Have your little hand up, and then when it's your turn, you say, okay, John, come to the mic. And then you get to come up and ask your questions. And um, two hours. This is the way Terrell's Research Group started off back in 2011. And it grew to over 360 members. Starting off small. And this week's um, topic, whenever you go back over to the website, then you can see that there's a method to what we're doing here. We've done the two Gospels, two churches, four baptisms, differences between Jesus Christ and Christ Jesus, difference between God, my Father, and Heaven. And this week is how the mystery diagrams work. But I did it in a little different way. I realized that part of the problem I was having, I was re reposting my work. They don't like that. They want something fresh. They want something brand spank brand new. So that's the difference, and this was just written yesterday. God's True Bible Code, that's what this is all about. This is definitely not a regular ministry. God's True Bible Code. The discovery was made in the early 1990s that God uses a trinary code embedded within the Bible characters from Genesis 1, 1 through Revelation and everywhere in between. God hides his wisdom in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit blood and water so this is the uh, particularly this verse right here it's what I was praying on back in just early 1990s I've been doing this work for a couple of decades since uh, my youth and then it was reading in prayer over a three-day period I was living in uh, London at the time so what what was the breakthrough was the epiphany moment that changed everything. And uh, this is uh, the, y, the YLT, the little translation. And it's one of the few that gets the, this is what I was sharing with you guys, I believe it was last week, when I was uh, actually typing out the Greek. This is exactly what the Greek reads, exactly what, from the critical text. The bracketed text here has been removed. It doesn't belong there. Only three Old manuscripts of the received text include this bracketed section. That is not right. It's not accurate. Whenever um, we, uh, we can do a video on that. So this one is he who did come through water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not with water only, but water and the blood. And the spirit is it, it the, and the spirit it is that is testifying, because the spirit is the truth. Because three are who are testifying the spirit and the water and the blood and the three are into the one that right there I was in the middle never forget it I was writing Dr. Clifford Denton from the Tishery Project sitting at the looking down on the 8th floor flat from the 8th floor flat Laycock Street West Ealing W13 and looking out the window, looking down on the, at the high street people, and writing Dr. Clifford Denton, and writing commentary on these verses right here, and all of a sudden, in the middle of the sentence, I just stopped. 
and put my my pen down and considered what was going on here just kind of like setting a suspended animation and it went on for three days and at the end of the third morning then I was able to sit down at my desk and finish the sentence that I was writing to Dr. Clifford Denton so it was really a big deal that's when things really started coming together back in 1990s finally to be uh, written down in this book with these diagrams in 2005 published in 2017 so this has been a it's like having a baby kind of labor of love scripture says that three who are testifying the spirit the water and the blood and these three are into the one that is quantified easily using venn diagrams let me see if we can yeah just allow that let's just see what happens here so the website looked around this is the one that was probably the best to understand the theory and you know, using Venn diagrams. We don't need to get very complicated. They are going to get complicated, but when you start off, you're just talking about two overlapping circles. So you're going to recognize, those of you who are reading my book or read my book, you're going to recognize this right here. That's a little background information. I'm using Venn diagrams. Okay. And the key for breaking God's Bible code appears in the very first book of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay, this is how this is one of the first diagrams in the book. It's right here. This is the most basic diagram, and this is, in my view, the key. If you understand this key right here, then you can go open doors everywhere spirit blood water spirit soul body heavens heaven and earth father son holy spirit i see whenever you get down to uh the chart number 60 and 60 a 60 a and 60 b then you're going to realize that the, that this applies to host throughout the bible Three witnesses of Genesis 1 represent three who are testifying from 1 John 5, 8. The spirit and the water and the blood. There are so many lessons to be learned here. The witness that is last, that's made first. The witness that's... There's a reason for the way that Christ is speaking about the first and the last and the last being first and the last that was made first and those kind of things. Because this blood witness right here is the one that comes last. The blood witness right here is the one that's begotten aspect. So if you have the heavens and the earth, this would be heaven. Begotten aspect, Genesis 1, verse 8. Okay. So when I was speaking about Jesus Christ, he's the one that came in water and in blood. Not with water only, but water and with blood. And it's the spirit that testifies. There's a reason that Jesus Christ, heaven and earth, there's a reason for that. There's a reason for the for uh, testimony of two or three witnesses, too. A lot of scriptural truth is bound up in this diagram that you're looking at right here. The spirit witness and the blood witness share this circle, this golden circle. And then the uh, the heaven and the earth share this circle, just like the soul and the body share this and the spirit and the soul share this although they are divided by a veil so we're going to learn about the relationships of these different witnesses by realizing who's a spirit witness who's a water witness and who's a blood witness so this blood witness right here is the one that comes last but he's made first but whenever you're reading those verses made first after the spirit witness the spirit witness has always come first okay so the one that comes last that's put ahead of the water witness is the blood witness, for example. The preaching of the gospel. Let's see if I have that diagram here. I don't have it pulled up here at the top. The preaching of the gospel of the kingdom came first. The water witnesses went first. But they were made last so that the body of Christ could be made first. Peter, John, and James preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They came first before Paul, right? Well, they were put on the back burner so that the last is made first. God's building the body first. And then he's going to finish completing the bride during the coming day of the Lord. 
many, many things that you can see just by looking at this single diagram. Once you understand the testimony of the different Bible characters and whether they are spirit witnesses, blood witnesses, or water witnesses. Adam, Eve, seed. The seed is the begotten aspect in the middle that continues to enlarge. All of these blood witnesses continue to enlarge. The overlapping of the two previous witnesses, like the Father and the, and the Holy Spirit. Here's the Son. He's going to continue to enlarge until the Father doesn't exist anymore. And the Word, the Son becomes the Word again. Okay. So the three witnesses of Genesis 1 represent the three, testifying from 1 John 5, 8, the Spirit. And these three are into the one, using the Venn diagram illustration. That's right up there. Heaven and Earth in tabernacle form. This is tabernacle form with the veils. Egg form is, this is actually inside of this, is actually inside of this. Okay, so whenever you, you, uh, you take this key right here in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Whenever you open that up into a tabernacle form itself, it creates nine witnesses. It's going to sound kind of, that sounds kind of crazy, doesn't it? In the beginning was the word. When you realize that the word is heaven, everything makes much more sense. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Because in the infinite realm, God and His Word are the same thing. The Word was sent here to incarnate as heaven, so that Adam, creation, could be made inside of him again, just like he was made over here in the first place, in the infinite realm. But Adam's dead. And so God says to word, His Word, go incarnate oh, right over there, and make Adam inside yourself again. Perfect, just like we did the first time. But then the perfect creation is made void to reproduce Adam being murdered during the Satanic Rebellion. You see, that's what this creation is all about. Heaven and earth, the restoration of one Son of God. The first Adam and the last Adam. And this would be the Spirit. That's right here. So whenever you realize the Word and Heaven are the same thing, all things are the earth of Genesis 1 1. The Word is heaven and God, well, God's God. It's the same God that created the heaven, which is the Word, and the earth, which is all things. So John 1 1 through 3 is the laid out version of Genesis 1 1. So with this realization, then you can restate verses. In the beginning was heaven, and the heaven was with God, and the heaven was God. He was in the beginning with God. Earth came into being through heaven, and apart from heaven, nothing came into being that came into being. You see, by using heaven in place of the word, then you can learn. Like, for example, where did my Father in who art in heaven get his name? That's where, because he's the spirit witness of the word. Right here. My Father who art in heaven is right here. And there's a lesson here that uh, there's something that I've been wanting to say to Brian. Because we went, I give you the lengthy explanation, and there's a simpler, really a simpler explanation. Sometimes Christ is talking as the Son about my the Father. I and the Father are one. He's talking about my Father who art in heaven. Sometimes Christ is speaking as the Word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Speaking of my God and Father. So it can get confusing. When Christ, every time Jesus Christ says, My Father, He's not necessarily talking about my Father who art in heaven. He can be talking about God. His God and Father. <laughs> Though, when you realize this is the Word, and that the Son is the, that the Word is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit walking around as one man. Father, Spirit, Soul, Son, body, Holy Spirit, then you, then my God and Father is this guy. His three witnesses speak in Genesis 1, 26 to 28 about making man in our image. This is the image right here. Same image as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Same image as the heavens, heaven, and earth. So out of these first three witnesses that we had up here in the first diagram, now we have nine. Take the three and the nine, that gives you your twelve. 
Many, many people have difficulty understanding that God has three witnesses just like the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They want to make my Father who art in heaven into God, and they just want to throw the Almighty away altogether. That's idolatry. You don't know. We pray to God through Christ Jesus, the one mediator between God and men in the creation, between God and angels in the creation. This is man's larger, better half, the angels. The man half's down here on the earth, the Adam part and the Eve part. The seed part is what grows up in the middle. Eventually, all the angels of heaven and all the angels of the heavens and all the men that incarnate are going to be in heaven. And there are going to be no more men, there are going to be no more angels, because they're all going to be immortal souls. That's what we were back here in Genesis 1.1. Only singularity expressions, only singularity hosts, walking souls. That's all there was. There was no men, there's no women, there's no angels. Difficult to fathom, isn't it? But it's true. There's no such thing as my father were in heaven because he was part of the word with the son and the Holy Spirit. So the beginning and the end are going to be the same. What started off as heaven, what started off as the word, it's going to be the word at the end. That's important to realize. So everything that's in a trinity now is going to go back to being a singularity. Everything. That's why I say, the reason that I say in my science, when, when I'm doing the Project Black Star, that relativity and quantum mechanics do not reconcile because this creation is broken. If we're down here in this earth part, the visible universe. Well, this is like the woman. The heavens part is like the man. This is the entire family with a seed in the middle. Well, you can't describe the universe just by through the, the characteristics and features of a woman. It doesn't work that way. So relativity and quantum physics, science of the large and science of the small, they're the same thing in heaven, but they're not here. The universe is broken. That's why I say the universe is broken. I understand it from this perspective. Okay. So this is what this is what I was just explaining to you, First Timothy two five. There's one God, and there's one mediator between God and men, because Christ is something that's between God and men. That's the reason why. Son of God. Very important verse right here. Some people can see it, some people can't see it. Jesus Christ is heaven incarnate. John the Baptist is earth incarnate. Once you see it, the lights start coming on. So this is uh, John the Baptist speaking. The earth. The earth is speaking right now. And he's saying, He who comes from above, which is Christ, heaven, is above all. He who is of the earth, John the Baptist, is from the earth and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. So when you realize that Christ represents this whole realm and John the Baptist represents this whole realm, then you realize this is the Lord God, the Lamb of God in the garden that made Adam, Son of God. And that's all there is. We're either a member of Adam's body or we're a member of Christ's body. And these realms are, are incarnations. They're not even real. This is the only realm that's real, real right here. That's where we're gods. That's where we belong. We're here to be judged in association with the satanic rebellion as perpetrators or as victims. That's the way it works. Okay. So, so this, this, some of this uh, commentary here, here is I'm kind of characterizing as I'm going through. So we're imagining for a minute that Jesus Christ is the incarnation of heaven and John the Baptist is of the earth. That's what I, that's what I was just sharing with you. Jesus Christ testifies of John the Baptist saying, If you will receive, he is Elijah, who is to come. He's coming. He's coming to restore all things. That's what the day of the Lord is all about. People just cannot see that. The final two verses of the Old Testament prophecies about, that should be P S and not C, prophecies about Elijah. While the New Testament begins with, guess who? Elijah coming to clear the way for the Lord. That's from Malachi 3, start at 1. 
God's three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, are testifying throughout God's living word, but they also testify as God's living word. Old Testament spirit, Pauline epistles, blood, kingdom epistles, water. 13, 13, 3 times 13, 39 OT books. First thing you're thinking is there's missing a book. Because there's one book in the Bible that's unique to every other book. It has elements of blood and water, and that's the book of Acts. Transitional book. It's a transitional veiled book. It took some time to be able to figure that out. And then this veil here, this veil is a person. It's the person that stepped through the veil. Elijah. Last two verses of the Old Testament. Start off the New Testament clearing the way for the Lord. John the Baptist, Elijah. John the Baptist and Elijah and David, Abraham. They're all skins, Joshua. Their skins for Genesis 3:21. Their skins for Adam, Noah, Moses, Bathsheba, Sarah. Sometimes these witnesses come by themselves, either Adam or Eve. They're the two olive trees of Zechariah, chapter 4, start at verse 11. Do you know who they are? These olive trees? No, I don't know who they are. That's Adam and Eve. They're the first and they're the last. They're, they're going to be the revel. They're going to be the two witnesses of Revelation 11. The same two witnesses from the garden. So the, 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 this veil here, and I say to my commentary, I'm, I'm characterizing it as, as I'm going here, not, not reading the whole post to you. This has to do with an identity and a mystery that's unwritten in the scriptures. God's mystery is written out. What is it, Colossians 2.2? 2, 2? Mystery of Christ is written out. Ephesians 3, 4 and Colossians 4, 3. Mystery of Adam is not written out. For example, it's, it's like the body of Christ. The body of Christ is written out. The body of Moses is written out. The body of Elijah, you don't see anywhere. God does that. He gives you two pieces of the puzzle and he doesn't give you the other one. That's taught by the types. Learning through the types, the symbols that are in the holy text. And then... The scriptures are laid out exactly like the tabernacle of Moses in the temple. This is the same blueprint. If, and then whenever you do the research, I give you a link here. Let me click on this one too. Oh, this is to give you a search. Because what you're going to see is you're going to run, be running into a lot. I recognize this. Right here. This is from Clarence Larkin's book. Dispensational truth, that's it. I read that, I think I was a teenager when I first read that. Whenever you look down on the temple, you're going to see a man. You're going to see the court, you're going to see the holy, the holy place and the holy of holies, and you're going to see the separation of the veils. These are the same things that I'm showing you right here. Whenever scripture says there's one God and there's one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. This is the man that he's, he's talking about. That has a spirit, soul, and a body. Three witnesses. A three witness mystery set is a man. The three witnesses of God are God who is to come, God who is, and God who was. And their relationships help us understand the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The heavens, heaven, and the earth. The glory of the heavens and the glory of the Father. <laughs> Because they're spirit witnesses. Spirit witnesses, they have the glory, but the glory that they have is given to the Son. The, the authority to give, what is that? John chapter 5, start at 24. The Father gives the Son the authority to judge, which makes perfect sense. Because my Father who art in heaven is eventually going to disappear. All of his attributes and of the Holy Spirit must go back to the Son because they came from the Word and the Son testifies for the original singularity. Heaven testifies for the original earth. The heaven of Genesis 1.8 testifies for the earth of Genesis 1.1. Okay? When you start seeing those patterns, then you're going to realize the Son, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, testifies for the Word. And that's the, the key that Brian's looking for. Sometimes he's talking about the spirit witness of the Word, who is my Father, who art in heaven. And sometimes he's talking about God, the Almighty. His God and Father, the God and Father of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the answer. That's the answer that you're looking for. 
And so many people want to make my father work in heaven into God. They cannot get it through their mind, into their mind. They can't see the difference. They can't see that God has his own three witnesses. And they keep trying to make the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit into God. By doctrine. If you don't, if you don't follow their dogma, their doctrine, then you're excommunicated. Whenever their doctrine that they're, that they're dispensing, if you will, is inaccurate. That's what my ministry is a lot about. Help to, to help you see God's wisdom hidden in plain sight, using His three witnesses, but also to give you weapons so that you can fight against false doc, doctrine that's out there. Three witnesses are testifying all the time in all the characters, 24/7. So you just have to tune your ear to be able to hear them. Okay, so both of these posts, I mean, um, this is um, this is what I just read to you. Well, characterized as I was going through. So much better the diagram looks on the post than in the PDF. The, for some reason, they're not converting very well on the PDF. But this is where it's at. This the I, I, I come to I've been coming to this Christianforums.com. You guys can sign up here. I've been coming here since two thousand and four and I come to this room not because I'm a dispensationalist. I've trained with some dispensationalists, but they're gonna tell you this guy this cat here, he's not he's not no he's not a dispensationalist. And I point out things that they just their eyes roll around. The the dispens but they're real smart. They got their Bibles open. They understand the differences between the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the grace of God. They just are messed up on other things. This millennial thing, things like that. So you can see my uh, two gospels posts. This fellow here, he's kind of a pain in the neck. He likes, he, likes, he likes the grandstand and he likes to create straw man arguments. And people, they can't answer your opening post. They don't want to quote it or anything. Oh, they quote the whole thing. And then they'll just go off to somewhere elseville. They'll just start talking, asking questions. What we really need to know is this and this. No. Quote the information in the opening post. So this one's got my name by it. I'm the one that put it there. Dale put this one here. So whenever I go on, I've been doing this for a long, long time. Written tens of thousands, if not more than 100,000 of these posts. First thing that I do is if I'm going to write on this topic, which is kind of long. It's got so many views and stuff. 944 probably not even going to write on it but if i do first thing i'm going to do is go to the opening post the very it's called an op opening post and you write it's, that's paying respect to the thread starter you want to address him directly you don't want to go into his post and start attacking other people that are debating on you know deliberating the topic back and forth you start with the guy who started the post then you can go in and, you know, you go in and make statements. If you've never done this kind of thing before, then you want to kind of lurk before you jump into things. So this is, uh, I got one answer. I went and looked at it. Dan, I, he's been here a long time too, like me. He, um, he asked me the other day if this was really me. And this is the other, this is where I'm going to do most of the writing because it's busier. There's a lot more people. This other one, I mean, these, these people seem really nice. You notice that every... Every thread that I write on has got the, because they're watching me really, really close. This is my different thread. So you can come here. You see where we're at? You can come here and you can join up. You can sign up and you can ask your questions right here. And then what I, for the good content, that's what I'm doing on a Sunday and a Monday. Because I'm, this is where I'm at. And this, answering these questions, this is the debates, I, my defending arguments. This is the opening post that I just did, right? And this is the opening post that I did. And see, this is the two. This is the week number two, weeks that I did. And um, so anyway, this is the religious. See, there's just not as much activity on this board. I'm not going to get as uh, much challenge of a challenge. I love a good challenge on um, on on these things. So a little bit of uh, misreport news. Six weeks in, 14 subscribers. Things are running more smoothly now. I'm not getting banned every week. And uh, well, it looked like they were going to ban me here. They just want to talk to me. And um, 
this is just giving you a view of what it looks like when I'm on my game then I'm at the top of the board and I've got six or seven or eight of these I haven't my name will be popped over here they used to call me the thread killer over at uh, countering biblical contradictions Andrew Tong University of Southern California I wrote 300 uh, 30,000 posts there there are no there are no contradictions in the Bible when you think you see a contradiction that's the interpretation that's wrong there are no contradictions in the Bible 100% sure about that that was uh, back in the uh, in um, the late 1980s nope Ni 1990s 95 96 97 98 pardon me 99 2000 in those years that's that, that's all I was doing every day my masonry worked in this um, so January is a really really busy month for me and we were just at the doctor and I have to go back to the doctor um, this Thursday and this is not even the dentist stuff this is this is something else and uh, so if I'm slow I'm gonna be there at chat tonight 7 to 9 Tuesday night I'm gonna be there and um, but like if you're trying to write me at the website you're trying to then I'm am going through a lot at this moment in January I'm trying to get the notifications out to everybody for the changes in the Dropbox links and all that it's January without all these other things going on is really tough for me new subscribers this week is is Tina Brian and Anna that's 14 supporters I'd like to call it your your name next week then uh, Joan wrote how do you receive their misreport newsletters website premium program survivor group program black star mystery report tutor chat you want to join us in chat that's the button that you click right there the instructions how do you join the chat room activity um Sean and I know I saw a message from Tanya that's David's wife and she was there yesterday it's on Tuesdays guys Tuesdays it's like the day before um, when everybody goes to church on Wednesdays usually right Sunday and then Wednesday so this is on Tuesdays is the reason we picked that day you wouldn't want to pick it on Wednesday you're gonna miss your regular Bible study the day before and then you can take what you learn on Tuesdays to your Bible study on Wednesdays that's kind of what's going on here so whenever you subscribe you hit that button on the website all right that lower left button then you're going to get in your notification email your Dropbox folder link that's the way you access this newsletter and all the newsletters and then you're going to get chat instructions where to go to register what my username is name of the room is what section it's in you have the link to it so you get all that information and then you have the benefit of being able to show up every Tuesday night 7 to 9 ask your questions Okay, so this is uh, provided the information to Sean, and these are the benefits for the newsletter. I mean, for the Black Star, these are the same links that are at the, at the website. These, see that you, it, if this was the website, you click it right there. Watch the description videos; those were just remade. Okay, now the, my clarifying statement section. This is where. My original two Gospels post is posted right here, and then Dan comes along, and he makes a statement up here. Oh, well, this is the no, N-O-L-I-D-A-D fellow. This guy here, he uh, is mixing his kingdom uh, doctrine and his grace doctrine. He's mixing all the dispensations together. You can't do that. He says, uh, no, as Paul taught in Galatians, the law was only valid until faith came. Now that faith came, Israel no longer needed the schoolmaster of the law, and that is just nonsense. If God sacrifice, God, if Christ's sacrifice could save one soul by itself, all by itself, then God had no reason to send the gospel. It's the gospel. That is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. Not God's foreknowledge, not Christ's blood, not anything else. 
the gospel. The foolishness of the message preached. God decided that's how he's going to do it. And God is the forgiver of sins. And if God says to stand on your head for 15 minutes and your sins are forgiven, then you stand on your head for 15 minutes, your sins are forgiven because God says so. He says that we're obeying the message of truth. The gospel is our, our salvation. Jesus Christ is Lord. God raised him from the dead on the third day. Our, the forgiveness is through his shed blood. The re, our redemption is in him. And we're baptized in him by the Holy Spirit. We're given the faith of Jesus. That's our possession. We become an active participant in his death, burial, and resurrection. So since we died and God put our sins on him, on the Lord, then they're paid. God's grace and mercy. That's the way it works. God has to call you. God has to choose you, though. People don't wake up in their bed one morning and say, Hey, I'm going to be a Christian. It doesn't work that way. Something happens in your life and God sees it and God calls you through the gospel. He sends the preacher. The preacher has the Holy Spirit and the faith of Jesus that's handed to you. The preacher preaches the message of truth and you respond to it. God, That's how God calls you through the gospel. We're going to be talking to him later down here. So many people think that, they, that what they are, they're, they're confused between eternal truth and dispensational truth. It, 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 um, almost all the events like Noah's flood, those are eternal truths. But whenever we're saved by God's grace through faith, and that not of ourselves is a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast, that's grace doctrine. It's grace doctrine for members of Christ's body who obey our gospel. Peter, John, and James obey the gospel of the kingdom. doesn't apply to them. They've got the gospel of the kingdom. That's why we already went through that part. They've, they've got their kingdom church, and they have church doctrine. They have to receive the Holy Spirit by laying of hands after they're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, after they have John's baptism for the forgiveness of sins. They have sins forgiven through water, and we have sins forgiven through blood. Remember what we just read? Up in that. Jesus Christ, the one that came with water and blood, though his water ministry is all about the gospel of the kingdom. Peter, John, and James kingdom is at hand all that stuff then Peter and John and James they accepted it so they received what they were supposed to but the Pharisees the lawyers that were trying to kill kill them the Sanhedrin they they didn't receive it they were hardened well because Christ died and I obeyed the gospel that doesn't help those Pharisees now does it not at all and they're still under the law Peter John and James were still under the law can't just say the law ends. I died in Christ by obeying the gospel. The law doesn't have any power over me, but guess what? I was a Gentile in the first place. The law didn't have any power over me in the first place. It was given to, to Israel through Moses. He dispensed the law. Moses the steward over Israel like Paul is a steward over the body of Christ today. Back and forth, back and forth, where I'm going to be up in this section, I'm giving clarifying statements. They're writing on against my two Gospels presentation. They're coming up. This guy just says, well, there are not two different Gospels. Such a blasphemy has no place in the Bible and should be rejected by the church no matter their end-time views. There is only one Gospel, the Gospel of Jesus Christ. He died for our sins. And salvation by grace through faith, although he means faith, and not by works. That's Ephesians 2, 8, 9. Anyone who teaches another gospel, then they are preaching a false gospel, and they're condemned. That's what Paul is writing to the Galatians. But he preached to them the gospel of the grace of God. Any other gospel to them is another gospel. See how that works? Peter, John, and James expect, accepted the gospel of the kingdom. Different dispensation. Different household. Different rules. Okay, so just, just if you're just going to come on to my um, topic, my thread, and you're just going to say, oh, uh, no, there's, you have to have some scriptural support. There's nothing there supported by anything. And so what I say to him is, boy, that sounds like, that sounds bad. Except for one thing, Jesus Christ, this is what he, this is what Jesus Christ preaches right out of the starting gate. Now that, now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God. 
saying the time is fulfilled the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe in the gospel well according to what this guy just said ramble wild jesus christ is a heretic because he's preaching he, jesus christ can't preach his own shed blood yet because he hadn't died yet but he's preaching the gospel of god right out of the starting gate in mark one see believe in the gospel jesus came to galilee preaching the gospel of god if you go to matthew 4 23 you'll see that's the gospel of the kingdom that he's preaching it's being characterized here galilee same spot He's saying the same thing. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom is at hand. But this is the gospel of the kingdom. That's why I went through and explained. This guy didn't get the memo on that. You guys should have it. That's what I say. Ouch, that sounds serious. But Christ is preaching Matthew 23, 4, 23, the gospel of the kingdom. If God causes the God's word causes the gospel of the kingdom, the Holy Spirit causes the gospel of the kingdom, right? Then it's called the gospel of the kingdom. I'm not making this stuff up. And Paul characterizes, well, he he um, mentions the gospel of the grace of God, Acts 20, start at verse 24. And by the time he gets to the end of verse 27, he's, he's explaining the whole purpose of God. And he says, those of you who went about preaching the kingdom are not going to see my face anymore because the gospel of the kingdom was done. The gospel of the grace of God, 100%. No more going to the Jews because they rejected the gospel of the kingdom. That's what Paul's saying after Acts chapter 20. Okay. Then uh, here's this fella. He wants to dump everybody into one dispensation. Well, I don't know how you come across these conclusions. But OT saints ended at Pentecost. And after that point, anyone who exercises saving faith are placed into Christ's body. The apostles are part of the church. I'm like, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. No, and just if you're just going to make statements like this, you're not going to support with scripture. Because what I would, if he'd support it with scripture, I go quote the verse and then show him where he's wrong. But he's not, he's not supporting anything. Peter, John, and James are not part of the church, not our church, our mystery church. And that's what I'm going to explain to him down here. They're definitely not part of the church. If you go to well, Acts 15, Galatians 2. Paul's going to submit the gospel that he preaches among the Gentiles to Peter, John, and James because they didn't know about it. This is in 50 AD. This is 15, a decade and a half after the ascension. Peter doesn't know about it. John didn't know about it. James, that's the Lord's brother. James is just. He's already dead. All right? And so he had to go, and he went by revelation. In the gospel that he preached, Galatians 1, 11 and 12, he received it by a revelation of Jesus Christ, right here. It's not the gospel of the kingdom. He's preaching to a, he's creating a whole new dispensation that never existed before. And they're not Gentiles, they're not Jews, they're not members of, of the bride either that Peter, John, and James belong to. This is the body of Christ. There's nothing in the Old Testament prophesying a body of Christ. They can see the bride, Hosea 2, started 19, the Lord God is talking. He says, I'm going to betroth you. He's promising Israel he's going to betroth them. Well, that's what he do, does to a wife. That's why they're called the bride. John 3.29. He who has the bride. John the Baptist is talking. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. Paul doesn't use the word numphy one time. We're not called the bride. We're called the body of Christ over and over and over and over again. This is one of the best places. Now, now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake. In my flesh, I do my share on behalf of his body. His body, not the bride, the body, which is the church. In filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. Of this church, I was made a minister according to the stewardship from God bestowed on me. Same thing says in 3 two, dispensation of God's grace. Here is the King James guy. Instead of stewardship. For your benefit, so that I might carry out the preaching of the word of God. That is the mystery. He's <laughs> Paul is connecting the word of God, his gospel, the grace of God, the word of the cross, gospel message that we preach to the mystery right here. And you need to go and you need to read of what it means, which has been hidden from past generations, but now has been manifested to his saints. But Peter and John and James didn't know about it. Jesus Christ didn't know, didn't know about it. No, he didn't say one soul. One thing 
about the things that were given to Paul after his death, burial, and resurrection. They were kept secret and revealed afterwards. That's what the, I'm telling you. Go read the definition of the term mystery. Peter calls it the wisdom given him that people distort, like to do the rest of the scriptures to the, their own destruction. But now it's being manifested to the saints. This mystery among the Gentiles, Christ in you. That's the new inner man that we get whenever we obey the gospel. It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit incarnate inside of you. Just like heaven of Genesis 1-1, I said it was an incarnation. That's the smaller incarnation of it inside of you. You have the blueprint of heaven right now inside of you. Thing is, the new nature has to be built up. You feed it God's word. The stuff that I'm telling you about right here. All, all the... Um, all the scriptures are living. I showed you how it's three witnesses, spirit, blood, and water, but only part of the scriptures are active for you today. Those are the Pauline epistles, the blood part. For I would have you know, brethren, the gospel was preached by me is not according to man, for I neither received it from man nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the grace of God. This is the part I was telling you about. After 14 years, he goes up. He takes Barnabas with him. And who do you think he goes and preaches it to? He, who he submits it to? Peter, John, and James. And people really believe that P Peter is pe preaching salvation by grace through faith in Christ shed blood in Acts 2. And he's not. He's preaching water baptism just like John the Baptist did. This is what he says. Peter said to them, Repent and let each one of you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Baptized in water. It doesn't have anything to do with salvation by grace through faith through his shed blood. Peter didn't have any idea that that's what was going on. Paul had to tell him about it in Acts 15. And that Acts 15, 14, at that meeting, is the last time Peter is mentioned in the book of Acts. It's water at the beginning and it's blood at the end. And that Acts 15, right there in the middle, is where Peter is, is called... He's not called Petros anymore. He's back, he's back to being Cephas. And he's done. Last time he's mentioned in the book of Acts. And, and this is this uh, Nolid guy. He's saying in, uh, the law is, is uh, now void. Null and void. Being fully completed by Christ. Like the law is gone now. No. It's gone for those who believe. In him. You also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, the gospel of the grace of God, having also believed, you were sealed in him. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everybody who believes. The gospel, the power of God. Not God's foreknowledge. Not even Christ shed blood. It's attached to the gospel and the message of truth, the foolishness of the message. And the preacher, that's God's method. That's the way that it works. If Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, right, cured everybody, it wouldn't be such thing as a gospel. Nobody would need a gospel. But it is through the gospel. That is the what? Power of God. The gospel. So whenever you try to make it universalism, for every, it just applies to everybody. It just it defiles. It weakens. It waters down the truth of the gospel and where Christ shed blood really is as a provision inside the good news message itself there's no other way of getting around that just for, for the fact that christ died you still have to accept god has to send the preacher that's what i'm trying to get through over there there's a whole whole bunch this is a uh, page 390 at the beginning you see how easy the diagrams are then they get to be Venn diagrams inside of Venn diagrams inside of Venn diagrams, showing you how it works. Basically, what you're looking at here, this is Adam, spirit, soul, body. This is Christ, spirit, soul, body. God sitting in Christ, the Lamb sitting in Adam, right here in the middle. And guess who's on the earth down here? David. Now it's going to make good sense on what's going on in heaven. It's happening on earth, on earth as it is in heaven. See, this is heaven of Genesis 1-8. This is the earth. David's right on it. But when you look at it this way, heaven and earth. See, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit here that from the other diagram. God is sitting right in the smack center. 
Jesus Christ, when he died down here, he was raised above all these heavens. He's sitting right there. He's at the right hand of God here in the highest heaven. The Lamb's down here in the regular heaven. The Lamb is the incarnation of this whole realm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit right in the middle. God's right in the middle of this one. God who is, God who was, God who is to come right here. So what the Lamb's doing in earth here, this is the entire thing, heaven, heaven, and earth. This is the earth of Genesis 1-1. The Lamb is doing things that God's doing here on earth as it is in heaven. And David is doing things as they're being done here on earth as it is in heaven too. This is a, um, and I know that you're watching, um, Brian, that this is a similar situation to my Father who art in heaven and my God and Father. My Father who art in heaven is right here. My God and Father is up here. You see? Now, he's incarnate here. When you get further into my book, remember it's 500, more than 500 pages, then you're going to realize that there's a veil here. See these veils? First, see the first veil? See the second veil? Where this second veil is actually like a giant typewriter ribbon that's containing God here. And he is going to actually be seen. You're, when you're looking at the giant veil, it's coming down towards you and then it's leaving you. And his face is right on that veil. The face of God. And it over, whenever he's looking over to his right side, which is over on this side, and his face turns blue. When he's over here, then it turns golden, freaking golden, shining like gold. And when he's right in the middle, so he's got his neutral. When he's looking right at you, well, he's going, looking one, he's looking to the past and he's looking to the future. Because God who is, is always in the present. God who was, past. God to come, future. So God to come is the, prophet for God who is he's the prophet God who is he's everything in this instant everything that's happening in this instant everywhere but he has to turn his head to see what's in the future and turn his head to see what's in the past that's just the way it works okay so uh, a lot of information in these diagrams this is the scripture this is the prophecy mystery timeline what most people have difficulty seeing is that our rapture starts the day of the Lord. And they want to tie the rapture to the Great Tribulation that's back here. And it's 3,600 years different. 3,600 years, that's how wrong the pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib rapture theories are. They're all wrong. Because the tribulation's back here, and we, ours happens to start the day of the Lord. There's a black star crossing event that happens here when the day of the Lord starts. Paul describes it, 1 Thessalonians 5. The destruction comes suddenly like the birth pains upon a woman child. That happens right here. Then at the end of the age, Christ is describing Matthew 24, Revelation 6, what's happening over here. But the day of the Lord is in between. Some people think the day of the Lord, most people think that it's an event. It escapes their notice that the day to the Lord is as a thousand years. And a thousand years as a day. And what that means is, it's used, the phrase is used six times. and It's only used in Revelation and Second Peter. And it's a euphemism. It means so long as it takes. That's like whenever you're waving your arms, you know, you're getting frustrated. And you say, this is going to take a thousand years. You don't really mean a thousand years. You just mean it's going to take a long time. 3,600 years. And I'm going to, I go through all the details. The, um, you really, really get a lot as you news, when you get your hands on these newsletters. So I'm only going to be able to characterize in, in these reports. Appreciate you guys' testimonials a lot. If you have a testimonial that you'd like to share, that you're being blessed, please send it in. I'll, I'll share it with others. This is where Brian, and this is a, feature, a featured section, is that you're one of my supporters. And you send a question in. And then you get the, you get the treatment. So this is the long version. And um, Brian, you're not the only person the trouble with these things like this i can remember going through where you are i can remember going back in the 80s and the 90s and i was in a similar position and seeing my father word in heaven and seeing the almighty and then the spirit witness of the word and getting the relationships right to realize that 
the son walking around if he's talking about my father who art in heaven that's the spirit witness that's like you, you you from the soul speaking about your own spirit but whenever the father son and the holy spirit speak christ is the word right then his god and father is the almighty so he he calls he can call my father who art in heaven my father and he can call the almighty my father and they're both accurate and that seems to make it a little confusing doesn't it but there's a reason for that we are able to get beyond that the sons of disobedience are not going to be able to get beyond that so there are blind spots that send me the questions and there's a pattern that's going to form i'm going to be able to see what you're you can, the blind spot what you can't see and to help you to see around that the um, sons of disobedience there are tons and tons and tons of blind spots. They just can't see these things. They think that we're out of our freaking minds. Like the guy up there. There are not two Gospels. Well, of course there are. There's a one in water and there's one of blood. The Young's Literal Translation. And, you know, I hadn't had much exposure to that. This is the one that uh, Brian uses. And I've found myself more checking with this Young's Literal Translation. It's... Um, they're tricky. There are tricky verses like 1 John 5, 8, the one that I showed you. Now, 5, 6 through 8. Tricky. And the, there's certain tricky verses that you can tell, you can get a feel on the translator by seeing, by knowing the original Greek, by read, actually reading the Greek, and then going behind and checking these guys, knowing the variations in the manuscripts. You can tell who's good, who's on to something. But there is no perfect translation that's out there. So when you see me using quite a V, here's the AKJV, the authorized version. Because this just happens to be the one that got Genesis 1-1 right. A lot, even the New American Standard, they and it's, it's the heavens and the earth in, in Genesis 1-1, but that word is singular. Like the word is singular. It's a singularity expression. It cannot be plural. It's impossible. Yeah. Talking about Adam. And, um... <laughs> Sometimes I get defensive for Adam because it was the woman who was deceived. It was not Adam who was deceived, but the woman being deceived fell into to transgression. But you see, the male and the female make the man. So when Scripture says the first man, the fall of the sin, that's Adam and Eve. His problem was listening. She comes along, Eve comes along, she's already deceived, she's already eaten. He says, yeah, but here, but hit what did Adam say? He says, the Lord God says, how'd you know? He says, what happened? He says, well, the servant that you gave me, the servant that you gave me, fed it to me. So, this, but Adam wasn't deceived by the serpent. He was subdued by somebody that was closer to him. And there are lessons in that, in the infinite realm. Those that are here as women were deceived by Satan in the infinite realm. Those that were here are here as men were not deceived by Satan in the infinite realm. That's a big difference. But the ones that are here as men were deceived by those that are incarnate here as women. And now we are having relationships and we're redoing things over and over and over again based on things that have already happened in the infinite realm. Free choice and all that is in the infinite realm. There is no free choice here. You made the choice as a God in the infinite realm. Now... According to Ecclesiastes 1, started 9, we're doing things that have already been done. So you exercised your free will. Yeah, there's free will because you had free will in the infinite realm. You're exercising it just like you did there. All right? You see the verses that say that women are should remain silent in the churches? 1 Corinthians, what is it? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, start at verse 40. Uh, start at verse, what is it? 28? I haven't been there in a while. But um, anyway, there's a reason for that because whenever the woman remains silent, the man is his spirit is her spirit witness. So you're using your man like an angel to accept to access things. And whenever you keep your mouth closed, you do not repeat the sin cycle, the pattern that happened in the infinite realm. You're no longer doing things that were already done. You see. 
whenever you realize that I'm the water witness, I'm in the servant position, and that I'm the one that was deceived, just like this is saying. It wasn't the Adam, but the woman was deceived. So childbirth, bearing of the, the blood witnesses and all that, all plays a role in it. Does that mean that women shouldn't preach in the churches? That they shouldn't preach the gospel? They, absolutely not. That's not what it means. That's not what I'm saying. People that helped me for the five years where I, I was coming up, I was wobbly. I mean, up from the time I was uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Women. Judy Bailey's her name. Kat, Catherine Smith. Bless her heart. She cannot be living. She was 80-something back then. And I, now I'm in my 60s, so. But uh, they're... I've mentioned this before, um, Kathy's husband was a great, great minister. And they learned, they were teaching me what they learned from him. And th and that's where I got a lot of the, f the sound foundation that I have. So, yes, that's what Paul says, but there are exceptions to those rules. Definitely. Exceptions to that rules. And I'm not, uh, many times the men in the congregation are just not standing up. And a woman must stand up. Whenever you... Whenever you're a lady and you are learning about the three witnesses and everything, you see God's wisdom, it's going to put you ahead. You're going to be able to show people things they never imagined that they would see before. Now this is, uh, like I said, Brian, you're getting, the long, you're getting the long version here. And then... Uh, I try to, um, I give the, the long version, then I tried to help you to see the simplicity of why Christ would call my Father who art in heaven my Father, and then call my God the Almighty, call him Father too. There's a reason for that. It sounds like it's a little bit confusing. I mean, it is confusing. But spirit witnesses stand in the Father position. That's the, the thing to realize. This is the, really what the creation is like. Infinite realm. Heaven is created inside of a bubble, inside the infinite realm. So which way is heaven? Is it up or down? It's every direction. All right? The, this is the recreation of Adam. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was singularity, made perfect at the beginning, but then it's made void to reproduce Satan murdering Adam. Which that's what the story of John the Baptist and Herod is. That's all, what it's all about. Herod, Herodias, and their incestuous daughter. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Those represent the three witnesses of Satan in the infinite realm. All three of them are part of the, the um, killing of John the Baptist, who's typifying Adam in the infinite realm being murdered, being held down, kept down in the basement, kept down in the gallows, you know, I mean, down in the, his cell, that way down the bottom. But whenever he spoke, Especially at night, Herod could hear him, and it made Herod leave his bed. That's Herod wanted to, he could hear John his voice, but he couldn't quite make out what he was saying. So he would go out of his his quarters, and he would go down the hall, and he'd stand in the perfect spot to where he could hear. But that took him away from Her Herodias. Herodias got jealous about that because he would hear that mumbling, and then he would leave, and he'd be gone for hours. And so that's led to Herodias talking their daughter into doing the dance, and it was the dance that beguiled. And then, whenever all the kings that were there, the thing that we're supposed to realize through the types is that in the infinite realm, this was happening in all the gods. All the gods that Adam incarnated inside of. That's what we do there. We're, we're members of each other's body. So I'm a god, you're a god. But we incarnate inside of each other. That's what it means to go into someone. In the biblical sense, knowing somebody, that means you incarnated inside of them. Read uh, Romans chapter 12, start at 4. Just two verses. Paul talks about how we're members of Christ's body and we're individually members of one another. And we are in the infinite realm. We all know each other intimately already. Thing is, in order for a son of God, who was a God in the infinite realm to be killed, all of the brethren had to haul out the incarnation at the same time, put this head on the chopping block, and everybody chop at the same time. All of the incarnations would be killed instantly. 
all at the same time. Nobody had ever done anything like that before. Nobody's ever died in the infinite realm before. Until then, that's what the heaven and the earth are all about. Restoring Adam, one member at a time, Humpty Dumpty style. So yeah, you're a god, but you're still there. And standing in God's courtroom. But you incarnated inside of Adam, and you were killed with him. Well, that's you. So yeah, you're a god, but you're still there. You're a member of Adam's body here, being made into a member of Christ's body. The Almighty and the Lord God of the Old Testament. Sent in by Trevor. He says, is, he has a question on Exodus uh, 3.14, and uh, which uh, three witnesses of God Almighty sent the Lord God to speak to Moses. And then you're going to give me different translations. Now, the idea here is to be thinking in Greek. And recognizing who's who. But if you have a good modern translation, like I would recommend the New American Standard, then we can just quote. And Moses said to God, Behold, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say, uh, What's his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am, he, he said. Thus you say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God, therefore, said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of, of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is his name forever. This is, is my memorial name to all the generations. And this person that's right here is our Lord Jesus Christ of the Old Testament. The Lord God of Genesis 2, who started working in Genesis 2-4, who made Adam and the garden. He's the Lamb of God in the center of the throne in heaven in Revelation 7. That's where Adam was until he was cast down into the earthly part, Genesis 3.21. That's when he's put in skins. So, if you want to know which of the three witnesses of the Almighty, three witnesses of the Almighty, it's not here. He doesn't appear to be here, does he? Because this is the Lord God. Remember, the, the Almighty God rested on, he worked six days, but then he rested. The thing is, where did he rest? And that's the key. And that's why I went through a considerable explanation to say that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God is inside the Lord God. When he's making Adam in the garden, God is inside of his word. The, the Lamb of God, the Lord God, Jesus Christ, is a tabernacle, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, just like I'm showing you these tabernacle forms, these tabernacles. He is the true tabernacle in whom God dwells. So God's going to judge the world and the angels. God's got to judge the world and the angels, right? That's why he needs us. It's because Christ is in us. And then God incarnates inside of Christ in us. So whenever they're standing in front of us, they're standing in front of Christ. And they're standing in front of God at the same time. Witnesses inside of witnesses. And that's what Christ is saying as he's walking around in the four Gospels. I and the Father are one. Don't you know that I'm in the Father and the Father's in me? Well, those, these are the things that I'm showing you with diagrams through an understanding of God's three witnesses that are testifying in the scriptures that God and this isn't my first radio this that did not start in 2017 when the book was written or in 2005 when the book was written originally written this started from the time that I was a teenager and going through my early 20s and in tripping and stumbling and crawling and and praying and <laughs> just really really had a, a strong hunger to know what the truth was. Like on the 9-11 inside job after this was done. That deep desire. That's why I call myself a truther. It really, it really bothered me. I, I had to know what the truth of scripture was. I read the Bible. Cover to cover. And then I read it again. Then I read it again. I read the New Testament more than a hundred times. People ask me if I have a photographic memory. It's not, it's not photographic. But it's pretty darn good when you've done something a hundred times. <laughs> that's what it boils down to okay so th again this is a long explanation and these are the two olive trees explaining Adam and Eve Moses Elijah Adam and Eve this is the last when they were in the garden together Christ the blood witness was in the middle of Adam and Eve and that Adam and Eve and Christ are all begotten Adam and Eve do not have belly buttons. They were made. Right? 
by the Lord God. They're the two begottens of the Bible that stand with Christ as the only begotten Son from heaven, right? That's the way it is. That's the way it works. This is the last, Peter, John, and James, three witnesses. Three witnesses of spirit, blood, and water. Christ, Moses, Elijah. And these are symbolic of the things that are happening on earth as it is in heaven. Like I was showing you before. Here's New Jerusalem being lowered down with the Lamb. Everybody, everybody bring new. We're seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's this whole realm right here. God restoring His Son. God restoring God's Son restoring Adam. That's what this is about. Looking at the time, my apologies, I'm um, having a really hard time going through this, uh, this medical stuff. Behold, I tell you a mystery, you will not all sleep, but you will all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will... I've been reporting on this, uh, D, uh, Dina was asking me about this. It was um, raised imperishable, and then we will all be changed. This is... See the mystery? As soon as Paul says the word mystery, you know this is things hidden that is now being revealed. If it's a matter of prophecy, it cannot be connected to the mystery. Because if it's part of prophecy, the Old Testament prophets could see it. They don't see a body of Christ. They don't see our gospel. They don't see our translation to immortality. They just don't, they just don't see it. Christian debate. Pre-trib discussion. Bible writer. This guy's really funny. kind of like him. The, um... What I like to do is present everything that he presented. Because it's easy, when a guy's a strong case, you just start breaking it up sentence by sentence, and you never get to see his case as he presented it from start to beginning with support. That's why you see everything here. And then I'm going to start breaking it down. The, the pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib interpretations of the rapture, oh, they're all wrong. Every one of them. So I go through and explain here. He wrote me back and he said it would take him 20 pages to be able to explain. And so I, I just, I didn't write that part, but I kind of laughed at him. He got me to ch uh, belly chuckling. And then I, uh, he asked um, but where I got all this stuff. And I said, well, maybe, because he's a Bible writer, he writes the longest little post like me. He said, maybe a good idea is to do a little more reading <laughs> rather than writing. Looks like I had a got a little work to do before I upload this. this is, these are um, David and Tanya's, they're sending in articles, so they keep an eye out. China sentencing an authorized Christian to a pastor of nine years in prison. I'll get these, uh, everything reformatted for it. Signs of the Times, what do they know? U.S. and Russia developing plan, deal with incoming asteroids. Lots of information shared. See, everything got off a little bit. I must have added one thing before I um, posted that this morning. So I'll get that fixed, get this uploaded. Appreciate you guys' support very, very much. The, uh, I'll see you guys in chat tonight, 7 o'clock. Remember, that's Eastern Time, 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Over here in this chat room. That's right over here. So you had some people coming in and people leaving. And they probably were... Wondering what was going on. But I opened up the room just for this presentation. Again, you'll get all the information on where to register and where to go in your notification email. You get more information right over here at the website, right over here. And we're talking about these two programs here. If you just want to be a newsletter person, it's just two bucks a month, just like this program up here. And then my plan is to record what's going on in the chat room and upload that to YouTube, pardon me, and um, present that in the weekly newsletters. So if you start off, you just want to be a $2 a month guy, then you decide that you want to join us in chat, then just, you just hit the this, uh, upgrade button that's right here. If you want pr premium benefits right now, it's just one payment per year, $50 per year, and then you can join us in the chat and uh, have me as your personal tutor. So you watch this on Tuesdays and then you come to the Bible study on Tuesday nights and you're all charged up and ready to go for your Wednesday meeting with your regular church. So that's the um, 
week six and I don't know if I showed you but right here every week John's adding another these is for this is for my 2012 series and now he's up to number six I'm gonna add another one of these each week new sort of programs getting better and better thank you guys again more information right over here and I'll see you on the next mystery um, report um, update coming out Tuesday as, as things shake loose and I have more time I'm feeling better then my plan is to make more special report videos on the uh, different topics in here like Brian's topic and uh, Trevor's topic moving forward after January and after the things turn around this health department then I'm gonna have more time that and so you can expect to see that moving forward just please bear with me now moving to January having a real tough time and I'm um, sure things will be better by the time that we're moving through February thanks again and I'll see you on the next uh, mystery report